Okay, so into the office category, we've got a standard dictionary. We've got the evolution mail cap program you saw in the uh, internet category as well. And also we have open office, three of, three of the icons here, presentation, spreadsheet, and word processor. Now, if you're used to say, for example, Microsoft Office or iWork, this is the same sort of application, but for um, Ubuntu Linux. It's also available on Windows and on Mac. So if you do sort of, if you're sort of umming and awing about whether to go over to um, Linux, then this is this is a great option to try out Open Office on your Windows or Mac desktop and see if you like it before migrating over. If you're a real Power Office user, so. Here, for example, is OpenOffice.org word processor, which you'll find very, very similar if you're a Microsoft Office user, simple, uh, easy to use, like, say, Office 2003. As you can see, um, all the icons are very similar. All the menus, again, are very similar. You'll, you'll notice that there are some extra features which you don't get by, by default within, open, uh, within Microsoft Office. So, for example, um, I'll make myself a little um, hello world. Here we go. Fantastic. As you can see, it's got a spell checker in there, and I've spelled hello wrong, so I can just right click that. Hello. Fantastic. It's built in by default. Again, there's no extra complicated downloads or anything to do. So, uh, another great feature of OpenOffice, one that sort of is a great selling point I would just imagine is the, the option to save PDF files Adobe Acrobat PDF files straight to your desktop you can share them out with anyone you like so that will save this document as a PDF so click on the button say hello world that's the document I want to call it press save it will save it into the documents folder and then quickly I'll just show you just go into the documents folder quickly I'll come back to how you you do all this later double click on the icon and up it comes. So that's um, that's really fantastic. That's you know software you'd have to pay for in Windows. Again, that's all free out of the box. So that's um, that's the word processor. As you'd imagine, the um, presentation and spreadsheet programs are very similar again to the um, Microsoft equivalent. So for example, presentation allows you to create um, what, what what you'd know as PowerPoint presentation files and spreadsheet Excel again. Um, I should also point out that all three of these applications are compatible with the Microsoft Office format. So you can save as PBT for your presentations, XLS for your spreadsheets, and also .doc for your Word uh, documents. So you can open these up in other systems, Mac and PC as well. So there shouldn't be too much worry there. So great free software and it's ruling your desktop and your office as well. So what can you say? Fantastic. Sound and video, Brazero disc burning. You can um, you can write a CD with this or a DVD or something like that. Pop it straight onto disc. The movie player, kind of similar to sort of Windows Media Player, it allows you to play movies, music, all sorts of things. Rhythm box, slightly more like iTunes, um, allows you to listen to your collection of music. I'll just launch that very quickly, show you the, the general interface, see see what it's all about. Um, so, for example, if you've got a subscription to like, a username and password account on Last.fm, you can just click on that and listen to some streaming music um, and all, all that sort of stuff. You can plug in your iPod or your iPhone or something and get all your music synced straight away. So, again, it's very similar to the sort of iTunes interface, but uh, to be honest with you, probably even easier to use than iTunes. Uh, a lot more ability to just drag and drop files wherever you want them. So. It's a fantastic piece of software. Okay, uh, where was I? So sound, um, we've got a sound recorder there for basic voice dictation and so forth. Um, okay, so that's basically showing you the most of the things in the applications menu. I'll just go forward and show you what's on this top bar um, before we go into any of the other sort of aspects like how to actually install more software on your desktop. So first of all, how do you navigate the files on your PC? Well, you do that with the Places drop-down menu. So for example, if you want to go into your Home folder, um, you just click on the Places icon, uh, Places menu, and go to Home folder. <clears throat> and now you can see all your, your files straight in there. So for example, if I want to go and see those pictures just in the File Explorer, you can see the pictures in the Pictures folder. 
again that's very very similar to um, if you've used a Mac, Mac OS X um, or even Windows uh, Vista or XP it's under documents and settings it's the same sort of idea so very similar view there yeah, you'll notice that the filing uh, file structure is slightly different you don't have a C drive for example um, C colon backslash which is your root folder in Windows is just called slash for a forward slash in, in Linux again there's much more tutorials and soft stuff like that on the website linuxnewbieguide.org so check it out if you want more information about how the file system actually works in Linux it's slightly different to Windows or Mac but it's you know it's nothing to it's not a big deal um, and you shouldn't you shouldn't really notice it to be honest with you there's a few other icons here for example if you, you can drop um, an image or a, create a CD just with uh, clicking on that icon there brings up this sort of drop drop down um, box so you can just drag and drop files straight onto a CD so I could do that with um, a photo for example just go in here drag and drop there and then right to disk and it would burn the CD straight away so it's nice and easy really good and easy to use and I'll just close that one down Again, the sort of main places which you would store your files, documents, music, pictures, and videos, they're all there from the, the places folder. Um, you can get into the root of the folders fol uh, of the folders by going to computer and uh, the contents of the CD-ROM drive. Again, if you want to connect to a Windows file share or an FTP server or something like that, you can do that over the network with, uh, with this dialog here as well, again, just by clicking on places. Um, there's a few other things there. You can search for files um, and it shows you a list of your recent documents and so forth. Um, the system menu is all about changing set settings and uh, preferences on your computer. The preferences menu here is all about sort of basic changes to your system. Like, for example, if you want to change the uh, way your mouse works, um, the little double click and it shows you the duration of your double click length you can change uh, your orientation right handed left handed that sort of stuff there's lots of these options within the preferences menu they're quick easy to change um, preferences you can change your desktop and so forth it's all it's all there easy to change settings administration is sort of more advanced settings that require usually to have a password prompt, prompt in there so for example if you're used to windows vista or mac os x asking you sort of for a password or a continue box comes up and says are you sure you want to do this it requires sort of escalated privileges or system administrator privileges or something along those lines these are all sort of security benefits which have been in Linux for years and years and years. And um, you'll find that when you go into many of the applications, especially the sort of advanced stuff within administration here, they'll always ask you for your system password, which you set when you installed the system. Of course, if you want to check up on that, how, what, where you actually set that password, that was set in the, the original tutorial on installing Ubuntu 8.10. So go, go back and check that video tutorial if you're not sure right now. So um, I'll just move on from there. Um, you can see that if you want to set up a printer, you could click on printing. Um, if you wanted to, we'll come back to the Synaptic Package Manager in just a little bit, um, but that's where you want to install software from. Um, and of course, if you wanted to add multiple users to your system, you could do that from users and groups. Um, okay, there's a bit more on help and support as well. You've got some online help, basic support with the system. Um, and a few about screens as well. You can log out and shut down straight from the system menu and also here at the top right you can uh, hibernate your system restart and shut down it's all there. Okay a few shortcut icons you can add more it's sort of like a equivalent to a quick launch area in Windows and um, so for example if you're always into the Firefox web browser you can just click it straight from there not having to go to applications internet Firefox you can go straight in by clicking that button so that's kind of handy you can drag and drop more icons up here as well so that's by default you get Firefox evolution mail and a help menu there as well